Hey guys and welcome back to Ardy Knits and Sews and in today's tutorial we're going to learn how to make a little jersey like the one I'm wearing on our Centro 48 stitch knitting machine. So let's get going. To get started you're going to grab yourself some waste yarn. That's yarn you don't mind throwing away. The yarns or wool that you're going to use for your actual project you're going to need a few pegs scissors and crochet hook and a darning needle to get going we're going to reverse our uh, crank in anti-clockwise motion we're going to take it all the way back to the white tooth here comes the white tooth that is the beginning I normally like to have this foot in between the crank and the feeder, this foot facing me, so I can watch the feeder and I can crank and hold onto the machine. Because even with the nicest yarn that just absolutely loves this machine, I still struggle and I need to just hold on to something. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take our waist yarn and we're going to hook it under that first white tooth and we're going to twist clockwise making sure that the wool sinks under that white tooth and we go behind the second tooth under the third tooth sorry i'm left-handed under the third tooth behind the fourth under the fifth behind the sixth under Behind, under, behind, under, behind, under, behind. And I'm going to do this until I've gotten all the way back around and I can't crank anymore. Okay, we've come back to the white tooth now and we're going to take this wool and we're going to pull it through the threader which is this little slit thing here and we're going to pop it into our tension gauge I usually just go with the middle one <clears throat> and for the very first stitch we're going to yank a little bit on the tension gauge just a little bit, not too much we just want these first stitches to be tight and then you can crank it and make sure that the wool is going underneath all of these teeth sorry underneath these teeth and behind this thing so I'm just going under the hook and behind the lumpy bit for the first round you always want to go really slowly, and by first round, I mean the first three or four rounds. You just want to make sure that each and every stitch is actually being caught. Because if it's not caught and it begins to run, once you've added your waist yarn, it's going to be a nightmare. When you go back around again, you add a little bit of tension over here on your um, yarn, just to make sure that there's... Some tightness in those first stitches. Crank until you can't anymore, pull a little bit on your wool, go around again. At this point, you'll notice that the wool falls off these first three stitches. So one, two, three over here. 
This is technically stitch number one and this is technically stitch 48. It won't ever catch on that one um, in tube, uh, sorry, in panel setting and it will fall off these two if you're doing the full 48 stitches. We're going to make a smaller panel down the line and I'll show you how that works. But you just want to take this into consideration. You're actually going to have 45 stitches in your panel. You're not going to have the full 48 because it's going to lose these three teeth. When you're threading it, however, you still want to go all the way around. And you're going to let that wool sort of dangle on those three teeth a little bit until it falls off on its own. Don't feel tempted to help it off because if it doesn't connect and attach properly to these initial teeth, what will happen is down the line, it's going to start um, coming loose. And that's going to be horrible. We don't want that. I normally crank out about 10 rows of waist yarn. You want to make sure that you're keeping an eye on these very first teeth here. So the tooth that's connected to the ends of the panels. This one here and this one over here. This one over here. Oh, there. You want to make sure that those stitches are down, that they don't pop off the tooth. They will occasionally sometimes try and come up. Keep an eye on that. So the very first twist that you do, crank that you do, I normally do it very slowly and I just keep an eye on these teeth here. And I make sure that these stitches are definitely attached. And as we've gotten a little bit further in, and our work is a little longer, you also want to make sure that there's only ever one stitch on, on that tooth. See, yeah. It needs to just only ever be one stitch. If there's more than one, that's problematic. So what we do is, besides applying a little bit of pressure on the first round, just to make sure that that first stitch is secured, what I'll normally do is I'll come in and I'll just pull this a little bit here, just to make sure that <clears throat> there is only one stitch over there over here I'll just pull it a little bit and when I say pull I mean ever so gently you don't want to yank this in such a way that it deforms the integrity of the panel you really just want to make sure that there aren't extra stitches that are going to potentially catch in here it's not particularly noticeable at this stage but as we go a little bit further in and this gets longer it will be way more noticeable Just push that one down and make sure it's not catching anyway. And down. We're now going to add our working yarn. So to do that, I'm just going to cut our waist yarn and we're going to put it on the side. We're going to grab our working yarn. I usually throw this in a washing basket on the side just to keep the wool nice and clean and neat and it's not going to be tangling up in anything. And then we tie these two ends together. When you have knots like this, where you've joined two pieces of wool together, if they go in behind this um, tension gauge, if they go in behind there, when you try and crank you're going to end up causing a lot of tension like here. It won't come through. So you want to make sure it's always in front of that little hole. You can see me. I've already caused a little bit of damage to my machine because I haven't paid attention to when there's been a knot. And it's literally pulled and yanked this. And if this snaps off, that's going to be horrible. So don't do what I did. Just always keep an eye on those knots and make sure that they're in front of that little hole. By the way, I have guinea pigs and they drink water 
and this one in particular is pretty much always drinking water so if you hear this noise there's not a whole lot i can do about that um <clears throat> they live in my office can i say hello my girl hello you're very cute okay so we're gonna now add the working yarn When that knot feeds through here, just make sure that the little stitches, these little bits here, just pull them out and put them in the front neatly so that they don't get caught in the teeth. We're not going to count this first row because it's got a piece that doesn't have any working on in it. So this will be part of the waist on row. By the way, if you're ever cranking and you struggle, it usually means something somewhere is too tight. So, for example, my wool now um, wasn't unraveling properly. Don't just push it. I made that mistake. Don't do that. There's something somewhere that's sticking. It could be that one of these stitches is a little bit sticky on a tooth. You'll see because it will pop up a little bit and you can see it and you, you just want to push it back down again. Or most of the time it usually means that your wool needs to be unraveled a little bit. Or if you've got like I've got um, a bunch of wool that you're repurposing and you've got a lot of these little knots. It could mean that the knot is stuck in here. Just if you're struggling, stop. Find out where that tension is, where it's getting stuck. Sort that out first, and then carry on. Okay, so I'm now officially going to begin row one. And I'm going to do this for this particular jersey that I'm wearing. It's a, um, I call it a floopy small, so it's big, but it, it would fit a small. And I'm going to do this for 97 rows. I'll see you when we get to 97 rows. When you've cranked up around about 10 rows, you're going to grab your pegs and the reason why you're doing that is because you'll notice it starts to get a bit curly here and if it gets too curly and it curls up in, it could potentially push these stitches off the teeth and you don't want that. So we just put a peg at the beginning of each panel. And then I usually put one in the center here. Try to keep that peg on the actual waist yarn so it doesn't yank on the working yarn stitches. And then in the center here. And the center here. And you can keep going. Once your work has reached the bottom over here and the pegs are starting to drag on the desk, you can take them off because you don't want them to accidentally push the work up and off the needles. When you're done cranking out the number of rows that you want to do, in my case it's 97, you can add your waist yarn and you can crank out probably about 10 rows. And then you can cast off, which is a process of just letting that wool go through and come off. And then you crank with no wool in the feeder. And all of the stitches will pop off. You crank once and then you crank one more time. And you'll see them just come off like that. There may be one or two that um, get a little stuck and you can just help them along. There is one in there. We would like some help. One there. And there's one right at the beginning over here. Once it's come off the knitting machine completely, you can grab your piece and you can just shake it out to loosen all of those stitches. <clears throat> Pardon me. And that's what the panel is going to look like now. So you can see it gives a really nice, authentically hand-knitted texture, like so. And we're going to do that now. We're going to make four of these. So to make the arm, 
Um, this particular arm I made on the tubular setting, which is 48 stitches, but I didn't really like the way it's sewn in. So we're not going to do that again. We're going to make two panels and well, we're going to make two times two panels. And I'm going to show you how to make a panel that's not the full extension of the machine. So the very first thing you want to do is figure out how many stitches you want. So if this was 48 stitches, I would like to make two of them. So that's going to be 224. We're going to add on one for that stitch we know is going to drop off. And we're going to add on another two because when we join it together, we're going to lose that the two side panel stitches so it will be 24 plus 3 is 27 and now we're going to mark out the 27th stitch on the machine i like to do this with a little bit of nail polish that way i know that particular color equals that number you'll see i've already done this somewhere where is it now here i've marked a red counter this equals um, 35 stitches, which makes a much bigger sleeve. And now we're going to find the 27th stitch. So we're not going to count the stitch because we know it's going to fall off here. We're going to count. So each one actually has a number marked on it. So you can just go ahead and look for number 27, which is over here. That's number 27. Sorry, this is literally, I've been grinding so hard and grinding the plastic. Um, so I'm going to paint this one purple now. Okay, it's painted purple. I'll just wait for that to dry now. So where I painted it, it is coming up as 24 stitches, which is actually still too little. So I'm going to paint another one. That'll be 25, 26. 27 so we want this one because we want it to be 24 plus 2 um, is 26 and it's not going to go behind that one so we're just going to paint that one off and I'll know that that's the the stitch that I'm or the mark that I'm looking for I'm just going to wait for that to dry here we can thread or cast on now. I'm going to go all the way to the tooth just before the pink tooth and we're going to make sure that it is caught like that it's going down we can now thread this into the slot pop it into the tension holder and go back go back all the way to the beginning as far as you can remember to give us a little yank beginning stitches and we're going to go all the way until oh, something's fighting with me until this pink tooth here goes down into the mechanism like that once it's done that you can tug a little bit over here and you can go backwards and you'll see that it didn't actually catch it didn't actually catch under the pink tooth so we grind it all the way until the pink tooth sinks in over here and then we go back in reverse as far as we possibly can oh. Little tug. Okay, 
to the pink tooth, let the pink tooth sink down, give a little tug, and go back. And then that's now giving us 20, 26 stitches. And we're going to do this until we're ready to add our working yarn. Now ready to add the working yarn. Pop it in the washing basket. Tie a little knot here. Just a little knot here. Get rid of that knot. Put in a new knot. This one, it's not very relevant. And then we go back again. Once that knot's gone past, we can pop it back into the tension gauge. And that goes in, just make sure it doesn't feed into the teeth. Crank one more line before we start counting it. Okay, from this point I'm now going to count and I'm going to count 90 rows and then I will cast, it, um, I will add the waist yarn, sorry, <laughs> brain break. Um, so right, I'm going to crank for 90 rows, I'm going to add the waist yarn like we did with the other ones, these ones, and then I'm going to cast it off and we're going to make four of these. I now have all of my panels knitted out and we are going to darn them together. We'll start with the arms so you can grab the two arm panels and what we're going to do is we're going to darn them together to make one tube like this one. You can lie the two panels with the right side facing out and you can line up the two ends perfectly like this. And we're going to grab a darning needle and we're going to grab a little bit of the same yarn. Thread your darning needle. We're now going to come in from the underside. We're going to go. So this is a row of stitches. That curly part there is a row of stitches. So we've got one, two, three. I'm going to come in from the side here. So we count one, two, three in and from the underside. I'm going to come through like that. Oh. And then from there, sorry, from the one just below it in the working yarn, come in from underneath. These colors are so unbelievably vibrant. Next to it, my skin looks dead. <laughs> it's funny how certain colors can do that to you. Okay, so we go one, two, three. We're going in from that stitch. We're going to go into it and then do the exact same thing on the opposite side. So that's, I think that's the one there. One, Side here. One, two, three is that one. So I'm going to go into here. I'm going to feed that in. Pull it through. And then I'm going to turn my work sideways now. And we're going to do sort of like an S shape. So now I'm going to go into these stitches. And the opposite one here. Then this side. Following that exact row of stitches can't jump around because then they won't line up properly.
those are my guinea pigs talking to each other okay so we're going to weave around like you can see i'm doing in this like s shape so we're going in from this side then from that side in through the um, exact same row of stitches going into the exact same row of stitches we're going to do this all the way through to the top so you can see it creates a semi-invisible join it's not fully invisible okay i'm all done with the one side we're now going to turn it around and we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side two arms are now done and we can move over to the torso panels exactly like we did with the arms we're going to line the two ends up and we're going to grab some wool and our darning needle we're going to come in from the end end into one of the waist yarn stitches counting three um, of these little pieces first One, two, three. So I'll come in here. And then go into the third one on this side. One, two, three. Turn it on the side and start weaving. So, I'm weaving to my own first. This color kind of reminds me of those um, cheesy chips. Okay, we're just going to keep going in this S motion all the way until we get to the top. What I like to do kind of helps is, I'll show you now, is I'll take it like this and I'll just sort of pinch these stitches so that they're lining up. Because um, <laughs> um, because this thing will curl, so I just kind of like pinch the stitches that are lining up like this, and then I can a little more easily find where I'm trying to stab. Oh God. Mm. Cool. So we're gonna do this now until we get to the top. When you're done with the one panel, you can grab the second two and you can do the exact same thing with them. Okay, once you've donned up your two um, torso panels, we're going to join them up at the shoulders over here and over here. I'll show you how we do that. Sorry about her. Um, yeah, the skinny pig is a thirsty girl. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to unravel the waist yarn. I'm going to pull this whole thing out now. Depending on which side this is, if this is the side that you cast on or cast off, will depend on how easy this is going to be. If it's the side where you cast on, it's a lot harder but as I can see now this is actually the side I cast off so I'm able to just pull this out I'm going to do that collecting my waist yarn
we're going to pull it out until we get to this point here um, where the waist yarn stitches are still in the working yarn stitches but only just and then we're going to do the exact same thing on the opposite side but we're going to turn this inside out so we've got the wrong side facing us and then we're going to have the right side on the opposite side on the other side like this so the two right sides facing each other which means I'm now going to pull out these stitches in this panel here so that's my one panel I'll take it off and then I've got the other panel facing me right side and I'm going to pull out these waist yarn stitches okay so we're going to grab some pegs now and we're going to mark out where the next stitches are so where are we we're on the side okay so careful not to pull out your stitches too far and find where you are let's use the pen the line here you can see I've already pulled these out, so I've got to be very careful with that now. And we want to go for this side. And one, two. Sorry, just find myself. Okay, we found ourselves. Alright, so I'm going to count out 18 of these stitches now. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. I'm actually gonna go seventeen. And put a peg over the seventeenth stitch on this side, and then do the exact same thing on this side. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. And that's seventeen stitch. And now we're going to grab some yarn and a crochet hook and we're going to crochet these two ends together okay and just turn it around So I'm going to pick up that stitch there, which is already loose, go into it, and the very first stitch on the other side, same story, grab a little bit of our wool, wrap it around the crochet hook. and pull through go into the next one you can just gently pull out that stitch go inside there and to this one and for the first stitch after the first stitch so the second stitch I usually pull both strands through just to secure them in through and through again go for the next one we're going to pick up that little stitch there just pull it very gently so we don't lose it I'm going to go two strands again and then I'll drop it I 
and we're going to crochet like this all the way up till we get to the peg. Arriving at the peg now, and when you get to the peg, you are going to grab a pair of thin circular needles. So the ones that I've got are, I think, a US size 3. And we're going to pop these remaining stitches on the circular needles. So we actually pull that through here first. Get to always put that down very gently. Okay, we're just going to grab these stitches now. You have to be very, very gentle with this process because if you accidentally lose a stitch or it begins to run, it's not the end of the world, but it just means that you will have to go and pick that up. Okay, looks like we've arrived. Yep. I'm just going to feed that over to the other side and now I'll grab the stitches on the other end. Ones here. Okay, now I'm going to hop over to the other side and do the exact same thing. Grab, sorry, this end, pull these stitches out, do the same on this side, crochet these together, leave out 17 stitches for the neck, and then I'll show you what we do then. We're just going to continue this tutorial with a different jersey, so if the wool looks a little bit different, it is. This particular jersey I have unraveled and I'm re -knitting. so it's got zillions and millions of these little um, bitty bobbies. But anyway, so when you have crocheted both shoulders together and you've picked up all the neck stitches, beginners, you can just knit probably um, 10 rows, that should be enough. Intermediate students can do a one by one rib stitch now, and I'm going to do also about 10 rows, maybe 20 rows. I've knitted the neck out now to a length I'm happy with. Um, one thing that is important is to end where you start, and if you don't have little stitch holders, a safety pin actually works perfectly fine. You can see I've just put it in through there. 
So I'm going to knit now around until I get to the safety pin and then I'm just going to cast off with some elasticated thread. And once I've done that, I'm going to do the exact same thing to the arms that we've already done together. I'm just going to take all of these waist yarn stitches off, pick them up with the needles and do a one by one rib knit stitch. Beginners, you can just do a regular stitch. Um, yeah, but I'll catch you when we get there. So you can see here the uh, torso of the jersey is done, neck is finished, and shoulders, and I've got one arm done as well. That's what that looks like. So what we're going to do to make it go in like this is once you've picked up all of these waist yarn stitches and you've put them on your needles, your little circular needles, what you're going to do then is knit six stitches and then when you get to the seventh stitch you knit two of them together and then knit six knit two together knit six knit two together and look like that and um, when you've gotten to the point where you have only 48 stitches left on your needle you can then convert to a knit one pull one the one by one rib knit stitch or if you're a beginner, you can just do a simple knit stitch. And then when you're ready to cast off, we cast it off with elasticated thread. So I uh, got very busy again and I, I leaped ahead in the making of this jersey and I didn't document every step, but uh, we're very close to the end and I'm just going to show you what I did really quickly. So when you're ready to attach the arms, what you're going to do is just imagine this is loose and this is the torso, is you take the arm, but you take it at the seam and you line these two seams up. So that seam and the shoulder seam. And you start to sew with your darning needle down in the first direction and you turn around when you get to the bottom here and you sew it down the other side first before you join it here. So you want to make sure that this here is lining up perfectly because if it's not, it's going to create a funny little hole and that's not cool. So yeah, so you put your um, torso down and your sleeve, you line up that seam with the shoulder seam and you sew down the one side and you sew down the other side and then you close it up at the bottom. This will still have been open, by the way. So then when you get to that part you've sewn and you've sewn on the other side, then you're going to fasten it here, make a little knot, and then you'll, you'll darn the um, side seams closed. And you'll obviously do that on both sides. And once you've done that, you can pick up all the stitches on the waist and you can finish that off with a one by one rib knit, which looks like that. Or if you're a beginner, you can just do a regular knit. To my beginners, in the second curriculum, which is coming up very, very soon, we're going to learn these knit stitches um, and how to do them. The first one we're going to learn how to knit will be the stockinette stitch. And that comes with the garter on the other side, on the wrong side. So you'll have mastered those two. And then the next stitch we're going to learn will be this one by one rib knit and then you just want to remember to um, cast that off with an elasticated thread just to make sure that it's extra stretchy and this is for my husband so it's very big so but that's what it looks like I have a lot of things underneath here but yeah Cool, so um, that's it. That's a wrap on our first curriculum. Congratulations, everybody. We made it. Like I said, in the next one, we're going to go over how we do the stitch, the stockinette stitch, and we're going to learn the one by one rib. And I'm going to be making a cardigan. So we're also going to include in that video um, how to do buttonholes. So it will be Actually, there's another th technique we're going to learn there, which is called the um, mattress stitch, which is how to sew panels together as seamlessly as possible. So you wouldn't see that, that joinery at all. 
so we're going to learn that um i am probably going to take a little bit longer with the upload of that because i'm going to make it and it's going to be three four different tutorials caked baked into one tutorial and i'm not going to rush them so it may take two weeks it could even take um another week more than that so yeah our uploads are going to be a little less regular for now and then we will chat about other things i might i'm thinking about doing a little series called Natanata. <sighs> sorry i don't know why i'm out of breath <laughs> um which would basically just be me knitting and just talking talking i don't know about things things on my brain or i'll just do like um time lapse series of me making up stuff because just currently i've got a couple of orders that have come in and i'm struggling to juggle both um this channel and the orders so i'm trying to figure out a way where i can marry the two without giving away say for example i'm making a little knitwear line for a clothing line and i don't want to give away their intellectual property if it doesn't belong to me i can't just put it on youtube um and or just how i can make things quickly without having to stop and document every step but i I'm going to go into just as soon as I get a bit more time all of the other knit pull stitches that um, are available to us and all the different designs that they can make and we'll make up some cool things so I hope to see you soon